This gentleman, as far as I'm concerned, is considered the guru of comedy, and you'll see why. Um, he just completed two movies back to back, Honey 2 and uh, Politics of Love with Ruby D. And um, he uh, can be seen, and you'll remember him from the wonderful movie, uh, Zach and Meaty Make a Porno. Amazing. And of course, 40 year old virgin. Please give it up for Jerry Bettner. And I had a friend of mine, she said, didn't you always say you wanted to do stand comedy? I said, but there's no place in Toronto. He said, well, look, there's a place in, on Church Street in a the basement. They hook you off the stage like in the old, if you're dying, bombing, you take a hook from the, come from this side and they hook you off the stage. And so he looked at me very skeptical. He said, oh, well, I'll tell you, um, come in in two weeks. Get five minutes ready. But you know what happens if you're not doing well. I said, Brian, get the hook ready, the Pakistan is going on. I'm, he didn't know I, I heard that. And I, every line I did, I kept looking to see if the hook is coming. So I started my line, I said, well, my father told me, and I'm watching, so the audience started to laugh at me. Because they were laughing, they felt sorry for me. And they saw how I was looking at the hook. So when they laughed, the rule of thumb was if the audience laughs, they can't hook you off the stage. Because that's the whole point is to get laughs. You're not bombing, I didn't bomb. But I got laughs in the back behind me. So that's, I was saved by being bad. There goes my dot. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, you're saying, oh, oh, another comedian from Bangladesh. <laughs> you just keep coming. <laughs> My, actually, I was born in Bangladesh, but I grew up anyway. <laughs> I grew up in an orphanage. I didn't want to, but my parents insisted. <laughs> but I auditioned for the show Survivor. I got turned down. Yeah. When they found out I was from Bangladesh, they said I had too much experience. <laughs> But I am a recovering alcoholic. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I'm recovering from last night. <laughs> I got arrested for drunk driving, yeah. The officer told me to get out and walk. I couldn't walk. He said, do you realize you can't walk? I said, I know, that's why I'm driving, fuckhead. <laughs> he said, you call me fuckhead? I said, no, that's the name of my car. <laughs> this is why I said I'm driving fuckhead. <laughs> but I became a US citizen. Yeah. yeah. Now I can exercise my rights to apply for food stamps. <laughs> Any gays in the audience? Very yeah, good. I don't want to talk about gays too much because they always take it the wrong way, so. <laughs> And these gays are so brave now, they just walk up to you? Yeah. This gay guy walked up, me, walked up to me and said, can I blow you? I said, excuse me? He said, can I blow you? I said, maybe you don't know much about me, but I don't have all day, so make it quick. <laughs> But you know, guys, when we make, come on stage, we make fun of everybody, dead people, handicapped, fuck it. <laughs> handicapped people, some of them can be very rude. <laughs> yeah. I was shopping in the mall a few weeks ago, a guy had a wheelchair, for no reason, came and ran over my foot. I said, why did you do that? He said, tough shit. <laughs> so I'm no fool, right? I knew he had no feeling from his waist down. So I kicked him in his chest. <laughs> Fucking gimp. <laughs> I 
I met a guy at a party recently, a guy who was deaf. I said, you're deaf, that's a handicap. He said, no, I can read lips. <laughs> he said, what's your name? I said, Jerry. <laughs> Why, you, why do deaf people have names? <laughs> it's a waste of fucking time, isn't it? I think all deaf people should be called hey, you know. <laughs> Living in America, living, nobody is dying of starvation here. People are dying from overeating. <laughs> Did you see on CNN recently? A 1,200-pound black woman, a 1,200-pound black woman, she said, nobody dates me because of the color of my skin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, Miss Hippo. <laughs> And then she said she's retaining water. <laughs> what, the Pacific? <laughs> and she's a, she's a waitress at Denny's. <laughs> Can you imagine walking three o'clock in the morning approached by a 1,200 pound waitress? <laughs> what she's gonna say, yes sir, can I get you something to eat? Yeah, is there anything left? <laughs> and she was, she was being interviewed recently, sitting on a couch, specially built couch, kind of rolls out into a fridge. <laughs> she had a big sausage in one hand and a knife in the other. She was pushing the sausage in her mouth, not even using a knife. I said, what's the knife for? She said, in case somebody tried to take his sausage away. <laughs> but I tell you something, she said she's losing weight now the old fashioned way. Sex, sex. Works for me. <laughs> Not the actual sex, but running around trying to find it. <laughs> 1,200 pounds, you wouldn't see me having sex with her. Oh, I'll have sex with her, but you wouldn't see me. <laughs> but I'm so glad you guys are laugh laughing at some of my jokes tonight because it means that you understood my shitty accent. <laughs> because if you didn't, then I'll have to quit the business and run for governor of California. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Jerry Bittner.